average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total cost graph. Notice that the average fixed cost curve goes downward as more units of output are produced. The reason it slopes downward is you're taking the fixed cost divided by the quantity and every time you take the same amount and divide it by a larger number then the average will go downward and so average fixed cost slopes downward from left to right. Let's look at the average variable cost curve. Notice as you produce more and more units of output, your average variable costs start downward to this point at the 10th unit and then begin to rise. This will become important later. Notice your average total cost as you produce more and more units of output, your average total cost goes down all the way until the 13th and 14th unit and then beyond that point begins to rise. This lowest point on the average variable cost curve and the average total cost curve will become important later on. Notice on this graph we have the average fixed cost, the average variable cost, and the average total cost. We can figure out the average fixed cost if we have the average total cost and the average variable cost because the average fixed cost is equal to the average total cost minus the average variable cost. Let's look at it on this graph. For instance, the distance here on the average fixed cost to the x-axis is identical to the distance between this point here on the average variable cost curve and this point here on the average total cost curve. So as I go on down here, the difference between the average fixed cost and the x-axis is the same difference between ATC and ABC. And so, again, the formula for AFC is ATC minus ABC. So we can take this average fixed cost curve out of here on every single graph and just have the ATC and ABC curves on this graph and be able to figure out the AFC.